Okay, now it's time for our top five. And this week is obviously a politically themed show because of the American general election. So we've gone with our top five political films. So starting straight off, number five, I've got Salvador by um, Oliver Stone. It's got James Woods in it. It's about a reporter that uh, goes down to El Salvador during all that trouble. Uh, They sort of had a uh, military coup in the late 70s with some, you know, rotten meddling from the U.S. government, as always seems to happen in Central America. So, um, uh, yeah, that's why I put it as my number five choice. I've actually seen Salvador. Oh, mate, it's it's a really difficult film to watch because it's... You know, it hold. You know, it's Oliver Stone, so it pulls no punches. Yeah. So, uh, for my number five, I went with quite an old film now, um, but it was kind of one of the first uh, big political films. Uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Okay, not seen it myself. The great Jimmy Stewart. Uh, it's kind of the film that broke him, uh, you know, into big stardom. Um, Frank Capra classic. Yeah. It's, uh, of course, the story of a newly elected senator with all these kind of idealistic intentions and um, he gets to Washington and finds out that it's all corrupt and um, all the senators uh, are in it for their own gain and um, so he kind of tries to battle the system uh, in a way. Um, Great film, really kind of ahead of its time, uh, not liked by many in power uh, back then um, for obvious reasons. Um, But the the speech he gives at the end in the... um, in the Senate is absolutely tremendous performance. And I think that's what made people go, oh, Jimmy Stewart, what an actor, you know. Okay, for number four, I put Elvis and Nixon. Have you ever seen that? It's got um, Kevin Spacey no. plays President Nixon. Michael Shannon plays Elvis. Even though Michael Shannon's like not the type at all, to look like uh, Elvis, but he does an amazing job because it's about this famous meeting that they both had. I don't know if you've ever seen the um, famous photograph, we'll put it up now, of Elvis and Nixon meeting in the White House. Uh, You know, you've got this, um, the king of rock and roll. Very famous, yeah. um, Who at this point is kind of at the twilight of his career, really. Um, At the start of the 70s, he's kind of, you know, he's not... uh, after the hippie cal- counterculture and stuff like that, Elvis is kind of a bit old hat, so he, he, he goes a bit um, he goes a bit off the chain, really, or off the reservation in a way. And uh, the film purports that he's like, you know, he wants to become this uh, undercover agent for the FBI, and he wants um, President Nixon's blessing on it all to become this secret undercover agent that's going to get rid of all of uh, America's political enemies and communists and stuff like that so it's a bit of a, a comedy really uh, it's obviously all made up in terms of the the meeting that the two have in the oval office there but it's a it's a bloody funny film it's really good little watch and michael shannon is excellent in it as the king brilliant i had to give that a watch oh, that, you, that did, sounds you did enjoy it it's it's good laugh it's quite hilarious so worth checking out what did you have at number four mate um i went with uh jfk the Oliver Stone movie, uh, which uh, I love uh, since the moment I watched it. I really love it. You know, uh, the JFK conspiracies are uh, one of the, um, almost one of the most fun in a way, um, conspiracies, because there's so many different interpretations of uh, of what could have happened that day. So um, to kind of present it on film uh, is great. And Oliver Stone does a, a great job here. It's that mix of um Reenactment and documentary footage and uh, the courtroom drama and brilliant ensemble. Kevin cast. Cosner's life, yeah, great cast. Cosner, Tommy Lee Jones, Kevin Bacon, Gary Oldman, um, John Candy, all giving John Candy, uh, all giving great performances. Um, you know, and and really the kind of pinnacle of the piece is the stuff that happens in the courtroom and the great speech that Cosner gives. Um, about the American people, you know, do not forget your dying king. Uh, it's just electric, really. Classic just stone. Hit the goosebumps. Yeah, absolutely classic stone. Do not forget your dying king. Okay, number three, I got War Games. Do you remember that, Matthew Broderick? Ah, oh, War Games, That's yes. a bit of a classic, isn't it? Like a young whiz-bang kid that's got a, a really powerful computer ends up hacking into um, the national defense system and um 
ends up triggering this uh, AI where they uh, have to um, basically beat the computer, otherwise there's going to be nuclear annihilation. And uh, very silly, very, you know, uh, very much a, an 80s movie, really, but um, great fun, all the same. Uh, so, for number three, I've gone with another Oliver Stone, and that's Nixon. Excellent um, film. Excellent film. We mentioned earlier Anthony Hopkins in the lead role. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, another just, great ensemble cast. You've got James Woods, which yeah. we mentioned. We've got Powers Booth in there. You've got Bob Hoskins, uh, Sam Waterston. Uh, it's just... Ed Harris. Ed Harris, yeah. E.G. Marshall, who was in uh, 12 Angry Men. Yeah. Um, the twilight of his career there. but And just, just such a, a great performance from Anthony Hopkins. Oh, tremendous. Absolute tremendous performance. And it's such an epic film with such huge scope yeah. um, in what uh, storytelling. Yeah. Um, I love it. I mean, we'll come back to that one, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, number two, I had The Parallax View which has also view. been mentioned, the Alan J. Pacula paranoia political film. Um, Warren Beatty, in, in I think, his best role of all his films. Uh, it's my favourite Warren Beatty film. Um, obviously, loosely based around the assassination, I, I, I think, of Bobby Kennedy because of that whole, uh, the assassination at the start and there's a waiter that shoots him. And it's a bit like the Manchurian Candidate in a sense that, you know, it's... Uh, brainwashed for uh, political assassinations and yeah if you haven't seen the parallax view stop what you're doing in your life stop the car get out get back home and watch that movie because it's just superb brilliant choice what do you have at number two um i funnily enough went with the manchurian candidate uh 1962 um frank sinatra uh there's of course the remake remake from uh 2004 with denzel washington i haven't uh, seen that but um, I think the original's the best. Uh, Often is just the a, case. Gr- yeah, you know, Frank Sinatra, Lawrence Harvey, Janet Leigh. Um, yeah. And the great Angela Lansbury, of course. Yeah, um, Jessica Fletcher herself. <laughs> don't, go, don't go visit her village, so you, you'll die. Political, <laughs> political murder, she wrote. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, neo-noir political thriller, you know, it's... Um, some people great don't, don't realise what a you great know. actor Frank Sinatra was as well. And I'd, I'd argue he was just as good an actor as he was a singer, and he was obviously one of the best uh, singers. Absolutely. Great films back then. That, that they were all in. Yeah. Um, even the serious stuff. You know, obviously he did all the musical number films, you know, yeah. but um, there's some great serious films they were involved in as well. Yeah. yeah, I think he won an Oscar for Man with a Golden Arm. And one of my favourite mm. uh, Frank Sinatra performances was Von Ryan's Express. Great World oh, War yes. movie. Great film. But um, yeah, that's a good choice there for number two. So for number one, I'll just get this out of the way. I chose Nixon as number one. That's why I said we'll come back to it. Um, yeah, it's just, for me, it's it's the greatest American political film. Uh, it's also the greatest Oliver Stone political film. I mean, I love JFK. I like W as well. Uh, I thought that was very good. Um, but for me, Nixon was the one. It's just such such a bloody good film, and I think uh, Oliver Stone himself was. I mean, it was a box office flop, and you can and you can see why. Because who wants to go and see that? You know what I mean. A lot of people that your general movie going public, they they want to go and see Tango and Cash. They don't want to go and see Nixon. You know what I mean. They want to go and see uh, Baby Driver or something like that. But they're not interested in this type of film. So it was an absolute flop. But. I thought it was his best work, and Anthony Hopkins is fantastic in it. Yeah, it, absolutely, it is an absolutely tremendous film, and um, uh, yeah, it's 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 one of them because I think it's a long film, and it's a, it is quite a dry subject matter. That if, you know, if you're not interested in the story of Nixon, mm. you're not going to like this film. Basically, I think because, it's it's yeah. it's, a, it's very much like a Shakespeare play. It's like Richard III mm. or something. You know, it's a character study of this man. You know, and what makes him tick and. And you know his motivations and and the sacrifices he has to make to become what he is, and his best intentions going awry. You know, um, it's yeah. I just I just love it. I think it's a really really interesting film about probably up until recently the most controversial American president to have ever sat in office. Yeah, I think 
post World War Two, he's the most fascinating political. I think still now, even forget Trump. I mean, he's still the most fascinating yeah, political. Trump's leader. nothing compared to Nixon. You want an evil president? No. You go. You go to Nixon. Trump's just a joker compared to that. At the end of the day, the, the effects of the Nixon administration are still being felt now. Yeah. Um, so, it's such an important part of history. I don't tell them what the hell you like. I don't care. They don't understand anyway. Go on then, hit me. What did you have as uh, your number one political film? Yeah, so not my number one. I've gone for something a bit different, um, I think. Um, I actually went with Citizen Kane. Oh, interesting. Um, which some people would necessarily not call Citizen Kane a political film necessarily for, you know, but in reality, it is a very political All film. All films um, are political. They are. All um, but, you know, of course, uh, the film is embroiled in the very politics we see today. Yeah. Um, Kane himself in the film runs for governor. He's involved in the high levels of um, newspapers, you know, um, owning the magnets and stuff. Um, Based on William Randolph Hearst, a real life character. Of course. And the subject and the- of... You're going to say the new it. movie, yeah, yeah, Man. coming out on Netflix in that, December. Um, God damn, that looks good. Uh, Mank, it looks brilliant. Um, yeah, I can't wait for that. But you know, the film is about uh, you know the conflicts in the newspapers, the corruption, the the politics of it all, the scandals of the lives and stuff. That's everything that we talk about that's wrong with politics today that we see as a problem that was being talked about back then, and it was still a problem back then, and it's not changed. Yeah. Um, they all saw it back then, you know. And, of course, the film itself, in terms of being a production, in terms of a story, is a, is a masterpiece, as we all know, you know. There we go. That's the top five this week. Uh, let us know your top five political films in the comments. Get in touch. Let us know. See what you think. See, Tell us what you thought of ours. See if we missed anything out. If you've got anything better, please get in touch. <laughs>